Well, good morning, everybody. This is Chatting with Chap, and I'm your host, Ginger Wade. And as you can tell, I have our special guest here. Rick Green is with us today. I'm so excited. And I know we were expecting him last week, but we are so glad he could come this week. Um, but I have a few things I want to share with you before we get into our chat with Rick, because this week, believe it or not, has some really fun nerdy homeschooler things to be uh, aware of. <laughs> Starting with today, if you don't know, today is 314, which is Pi Day. For us math nerdy people, I tagged Stephen Demi this morning, so I'm going to show our little sign. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's backwards, of course. Square root of negative one, two cubed, some pie. I ate some pie, and it was good. So today's pie day. So if you're all about learning circumferences and circular things, you're going to need some pie today. So make yourself some pie and enjoy our 3.14 number. I love pie. Uh, and if you look at my Facebook, if you're connected with me on Facebook, I actually have a picture of a pie I made with that inscribed on top because, yes, I'm a math nerd and I make a pie every pie day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Tomorrow is the Ides of March. So if you need to do a little Roman history, learn about Julius Caesar, mm, some fun stuff there. So that is going on tomorrow. And Friday on the 17th is St. Patrick's Day. Lots of good things to learn there about St. Patrick and Ireland. And if you got your veggie tail on St. Patrick's, there's a really fun veggie tale out there that we watch every year. Uh, that was it's on the sumo of the opera one. So if you don't know where it's connected, it's a, it's a short, but it's fun. Little information about St. Patrick out there. So here we go with our chat with, with Rick. And I want to tell you, I've known about Rick for a long time. Um, I actually first heard about him because I got connected with David Barton and Wall Builders uh, and then learned about Rick through there. And we watched Constitution Live. I'm currently going through it with one of my daughters. And it's just been amazing to learn from uh, from Rick as he shares and, and David Barton too. And they share like the content of our constitution and our history is just amazing. And my parents watch you on Victory News. Oh they yeah. Your commentary. And of course we've heard you on different podcasts and stuff. So welcome to Chatting with Chap, Rick. We're, I'm so glad to have you with us today. It's my pleasure. Glad to be with you. In fact, I'll be on Victory right after this. So tell your parents oh, to tune in. So. That's awesome. I will. She's actually downstairs teaching my little ones some All right. reading in, in English. So I will tell her that. That's once great. We're done. So that is awesome. So, so Rick, tell my audience now there, there's a lot of new homeschoolers in Pennsylvania. There's a lot of new homeschoolers yeah. everywhere. And they're just getting connected with us, chap, and um, learning about like what conventions are and who the people are that are out there. So they may not know you. So can you sure. tell us a little bit about you and and your background and all that kind of stuff? Like, who Sure. Are you? Well, and first of all, thank you for being uh, there for these new homeschoolers. There are so many new people. You know, I've heard varying uh, numbers, double, triple in the last couple of years. I mean, it's mm -hmm. exploded. And so you got a lot of parents that are um, you know, figuring this out. And if they had to do it on their own, I think they, you know, a lot of people would end up giving up, but because yeah. of associations like chap, they have camaraderie, they have, you know, uh, people to sharpen each other's iron to, to you know, to, to, to go and, and, and talk and just get advice. Sometimes cry on your shoulder and say, Hey, I need Absolutely. help, but I'm trying to figure this out. And so I just think if, you know, the God's timing, of course, but I think he allowed for, these associations get stronger and stronger and stronger over these last 10, 15 years, especially for this moment, uh, to be prepared for this massive influx of of families that are saying uh, an, enough of letting the state uh, indoctrinate my child. I'm not, I'm no longer going to hand my kid over, uh, you know, to, to, to Rome and be surprised when to Caesar and be surprised if they act like Romans. I'm, I'm going to start teaching them the faith. I'm going to start teaching them and raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I want my curriculum to back that up and to teach that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I just thank God for y'all and, and, uh, and for the others around the country. Uh, we, you know, we, uh, we, we got started back when I was a house member, I used to be in the Texas legislature and really out of frustration that there were so few people in, in, in the political realm that were coming from a position of conviction and mostly just kind of mm -hmm. finger to the wind, whatever's popular, mm -hmm. what'll get me reelected. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to help raise up a new generation of leaders that would be grounded in biblical worldview that would really understand the founding of the country and, and, and sort of what are the inputs that produce good outputs societally? Uh, because if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. That's for us personally yeah. and family, mm -hmm. but it's also for a country and, and a culture. Mm -hmm. If you put good stuff in, you get good stuff out. Mm -hmm. And the founders knew this. They talked about it over and over again. 
talked about if you had the Bible infused into the culture, you would get good outcomes. If you remove the Bible and the principles of the Bible, mm-hmm. you would get all the crime and vice and slavery and all the things you didn't want. And so I just I, I became very passionate about that. And we started with kids just tra- training young. When I say kids, I mean, 16 to 25 year olds, young people mm-hmm. at that point when they're really figuring out what do I really believe? What, what do I want to do with my life? What's my what God's calling on my life? What's my purpose? So for 15 years, that's what that's what we zeroed in on 16 to 25 year olds. And we do these what we call leadership congresses around the country and state capitals across the country. Closest one to you guys at Chapa would be at, at Dover. We do one in Dover, Delaware. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, Nicole Tice leads that one from the Delaware Family Policy Council. So anyway, we did that for years. And then we started doing more and more constitution training because we realized, you know, civic ignorance, biblical mm-hmm. ignorance, that's the Petri dish where bad government grows. And you and you get um, bad leaders and bad results if you don't have civic literacy, if you don't have a populace that is educated in the basics of, of the principles of liberty and what we know are mm-hmm. biblical principles of liberty. And so we started doing constitution classes and everywhere we could trying to get people to learn these things. And, and that's just exploded. I think we're you know close to a million people that have been through either constitutional live or biblical citizenship or one of our other our other classes. And uh, and we just love doing it. We 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 try to I, I, I try to say this as humbly as I can. We have the only constitution classes in which you'll stay awake. Everybody else to go to sleep. You know, I just I hate boring history. David yeah, Barton absolutely. spoiled me. You know, I used to I used to sleep in high school and college in government classes and oh, yes. history classes. And then somebody gave me a cassette tape of David Barton and he brought it to life. Mm-hmm. And I was like, OK, I, I want to learn it this way. And if I ever teach it, I'm going to teach it that way. And so that's what ended up mm-hmm. happening. So we love what we do. We're blessed to do what we do. And and uh, and we're thankful to be partnering with you all to, to do, bring this to Pennsylvania. That is awesome. We are very thankful for you too. And I tell you what, that is very true. You guys do make it come alive. And I, I slept through history too. I hated history <laughs> in high school. And then I started teaching my kids and I learned about literature, you know, and, and teaching them through that way. But but your stuff too. And and of course you're doing things with Brad Stein. Oh my goodness. It just, yes. makes it like you said, it brings it to life and makes it pertinent. Like, you know, yeah. it was awesome. It's awesome. So Okay, so we here at CHAP, you know, we are the Christian Homeschool Association of Pennsylvania. We're all about tr- discipling our children, training our children the way we should go and the way they should go, um, raising them up, giving them what they need to be functioning adults and stuff. That is what our heart is. That is what we are encouraging parents to do throughout our state. And so we're bringing you in and you're America's Constitution coach, right? And you know all about the Constitution and sharing that. So how do those... How do those connect? Like, how does this, you know, this encouraging a faith-based yeah. education, how does that connect with the Constitution? Do they have Yeah, any- good, great question. And and uh, and I forgot to mention, by the way, I was homeschooled myself. I mean, I was homeschooled back in the day when you didn't answer the front door. Exactly. Uh, and it was all very questionable. And I remember seeing my pastor on television where they're, you know, coming after him for encouraging homeschooling. So, uh, so we, we've got a long history in the homeschool uh, community itself. We homeschooled all four of our kids. They're all grown now. And and uh, homeschooled them all the way through. But um, anyway, all that to, just to say, so I, I, I love the movement and, and a part of the movement, but why bring the Constitution in and, and from a faith-based perspective? Um, and, and, I, and I always approach it this way. And, I, and a friend of mine, Paul Blair, he's a pastor out of Oklahoma. I, I told him last week, I said, I'm still in this line from you because it's so good. Uh, but he started to say this to pastors. He'll say, you know, what, what part of your life is the Lord not Lord over? And then mm. get them to think about the fact that, you know, we've, we've kind of put government and 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 politics in that word I, I hate using even using that word but the constitution all those things in this box over here and said uh-huh. well that's that's not you know we don't the bible doesn't touch that or church doesn't touch that or whatever instead of saying the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof mm-hmm. psalms 24 1 and saying that that the the great commission is actually to teach them to obey everything i've commanded mm-hmm. you and so from our perspective it's very much a part of our our faith walk and that to truly serve God well, we have to serve him in every single area. That means work, that means relationships, and yes, it means even our government and how our society is formed. And so for us, the Constitution is just, it's kind of like what Charles Finney said in the Second Great Awakening, that politics is just simply part of a religion in a country such as this, and Christians must do their duty to their country as a part of their duty to God. Mm -hmm. God will bless or curse this nation according to the course Christians take in politics. And what he was saying was, that in our system, if we were in the Roman Empire, it'd be different. We'd render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, yeah. and we have no say in how governments run. It's all Caesar. Mm-hmm. But in our system, we are Caesar. So because when he, when he says a system like ours or you know, in, in a country such as this, what he's saying is we're a constitutional republic, which means 
you're Caesar, I'm Caesar, we're in charge, and therefore God's given us responsibility, and therefore we have to say, okay, how do I do Caesar well? How do I fulfill my role biblically? What does the Bible say about how to treat my neighbor, how to lead, how to form, you know, what are good taxes, bad taxes, all that. The Bible speaks to every single one of those things. And so the Constitution itself gives us a chance to, to analyze how our society's formed from both a biblical perspective and a republic constitutional. How do we do this in our particular our particular system? And and we just want to be good stewards of, of what God's given us. And we're blessed to have, you know, I would argue the best system in the history of the world, Absolutely. you know, and some yeah. people would say, well, Rick, you know, America this and America that. And there's a real debate right now. Is America good or bad? Should I defend this or not? And I'm a country boy. I just ask people, listen, are people trying to get in? Or are they yeah. trying to get out? That's yeah. the test. Are we a good, yeah. are we a nation that people want to come to or a nation people are digging tunnels to get out of? And of course, everybody knows the answer to that. Mm-hmm. There's a reason they want to come here. There's a reason uh, that we have one out of every five immigrants on the planet, more than the second, third, fourth, mm-hmm. and fifth nations combined. There, there's a reason America is still the the shining city on the hill. And we've got our problems. Don't, you know, listen, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we could talk about all the negatives and the bad. It's there. And, and you know, David Barton and I both, we always say the good, the bad, and the ugly. We want to be <laughs> eyes wide open. So, Ginger, I'm not glossing over any of that or being yeah. Pollyanna. We can talk about that. Uh, but but I just think we've lost the good. We don't talk about the beauty yeah. of our system and what God's given us. And so people check out instead of yeah. saying, wait a minute, this is my responsibility. And I want my kids to have freedom. So I'm going to teach them from a faith perspective how to be a good citizen. Yeah, absolutely. And and there's just those, you know, I don't know how the church bought into that lie. Don't get involved. Yeah. You're supposed to be taking care of sharing the gospel. Well, it's it's all part of the package. And like That's we've been right. watching Constitutional Live, my daughter and I. And uh, she's like, well, mom, I can watch a little. I'm like, no, no, I want to watch it. I've watched it before, but <laughs> I, you know, like, I'm not immersed in it every day like you are. So I forget. So uh, I like when I like watching it again. And then you guys, you and David are there and you're talking about quotes from these guys and scriptures that they they bring up to to support the different things in the Constitution. It just blows me away. Like, it's just so intertwined for all that. And and well, like you, my do- go ahead. you'll probably laugh at this. You, you're saying you're not in it all the time and you, and you don't remember it. I'm in it all the time and I don't remember it. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll do the class with somebody online or whatever. We'll do one of our national classes. We'll be watching the video. And be like, I don't remember us saying that. That's pretty cool <laughs> stuff. So uh, anyway, go ahead. I, but 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 believe me, there's so much in there. The more it you is. do the class, the more stuff you find. But go, there go is. ahead. It's really, it's truly amazing. And I love that. I mean, the documents are out there. Like you guys say, you can get your yeah. hands into it and and find out for yourself. But um, so these days, since no one studies it, like they don't really study it in school. I don't know how much of a focus I mean, there's homeschooling parents and that, that me, it's important to me. So I make sure that my kids know it, right? So I don't know how many people are realizing how the, the government's been overstepping their bounds, yeah. um, how things are twisted to mean something they don't really mean. So a lot of America is ignorant to the constitution. And so how is this, you kind of touched on this, but but how is this just to make people aware, if you don't know the constitution, you don't know your rights, how's that gonna affect how we function? Like, yeah. you know, like I'm just looking at the, the the fraud there's just it's just everywhere but but we're ignorant so why is our ignorance making this worse do you know what i'm yeah. asking oh uh, no I, I hear you exactly and 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 i think i mean i really think most every problem we're facing in america today comes down to the fact number one that we rejected god so we rejected godly principles and the and the good inputs that produce a good mm-hmm. society and number two, the ignorance. We just don't know how our system's supposed to work. And so because of that, we buy the lie. So, you know, in Second Thessalonians, it, it, it talks about that. If you reject the truth, then you buy the lie, then you act on the lie. And then when you act on the lie, you have to live with the, the negative consequences of acting on that lie and the destruction comes. And that's that's exactly where we are. I mean, we rejected mm-hmm. truth in this country, started doing that about 50 years ago and really embraced that moral relativism. And there is no right and wrong. That mindset, mm-hmm. we really embraced that about 25, 30 years ago. And then the education system started teaching it. And, and, and so we've allowed this cultural Marxism to be, um, you know, literally poured into generations of Americans. And as a result, um, you know, the, the lie has been embraced. So if we don't bring the truth back and we don't teach, OK, this is the, the actual history of America. This is the, the, the truth about how a constitutional republic works and the role of us as, as the church in that constitutional republic. If we don't do that, I think America's done. I don't, I'm not a doomsdayer. I'm just saying I'm a, I'm a student of history. We're at the 250-year mark. 
That's when most civilizations fall apart. We've broken the mold every step of the way. So I believe we can break the mold again, but Mm -hmm. only if we become an informed citizenry. Patriotism Mm -hmm. is not enough. It has to be informed patriotism. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to wave the flag. We have to know why that flag behind me is worthy of being waved. What does it stand for? What are the values that were infused? And it's not that we worship the flag or we worship America or any of that. You know, Mm -hmm. I think America is probably not even around when Jesus, you know, comes back because there's no one to defend Israel. If you, if you look at a lot of those things in the, in the Bible. So it's not that we're worshiping America. We're just saying that this is just a duty thing. This is just where mm-hmm. God's placed us at this moment. Most Christians have a a pillow or a coffee mug with Jeremiah. You know, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper. <laughs> Nobody talks about where they were headed, right? They were headed into <laughs> 70 years of captivity. And yet he mm-hmm. said, build your houses, marry your wives, mm-hmm. plant your gardens, raise your, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so whether America survives or not, these principles, these biblical ideas of how to treat our neighbor, how to, how to form society, all that these are vitally important and have to be restored. Um, And it's our job to do that as believers. It's our responsibility. And as parents, it's our job to teach our children these truths. Um, Every every state constitution in America in the education section talks about the reason for education in in most states for public schools is to to have an informed citizenry. Mm -hmm. Well, virtually no state in America is still doing that, actually following, <laughs> which is why homeschooling exploded yeah. because yeah. we as parents said, you guys are failing yeah. not only at teaching the right values, you're failing at even educating my kid. Mm-hmm. And so now, mm-hmm. now we have this window of opportunity where all the bad of the last few years where government's gotten completely out of control has shaken us out of our slumber. And yeah. millions of families are now mm-hmm. saying, what do I do? I want to do something. I want to learn more. So we have, you and me and all these associations, we have a a, an opportunity. We have a window yes. where we can share that truth with all these families and then they can share it with their kids. There's a real chance here at revival. There's a real chance yeah. here at a, a revolution of freedom and, and a love of, of coming back to God's word. And I don't want anybody to think that when they come to the conference or when they watch any of our stuff, that we're at all saying politics is the answer. Not at all. What we're saying is the Bible is the answer. Absolutely. Going back to God's word, getting into Absolutely. God's word every day, and then applying it to everything and not leaving anything off the table. That's the message that I plan to bring at the at the conference and that I mm-hmm. hope people will em- embrace is that if you want to do something to save America, get back in God's word and teach it to yourself and to your kids. And then don't leave anything off limits when you go to live that out. Absolutely. That is awesome. And that kind of encapsulated my next question. Maybe I was, was reading your mind. T- that's okay. You were. It was awesome. So like, and we're all about it. We're about equipping, connecting, encouraging the homeschool families. You know, we're protecting, keeping an eye on those legislators in Harrisburg and seeing what they're up to. Yeah. Um, but it, we're, I'm like super excited to have you there to be encouraging the people and making them aware of what you just said, of the fact that that we need to be active, we need to be teaching our kids, and a lot of us, like I, I don't remember ever reading the Constitution in high school. Like I don't, I mean, we we learned American history or whatever, but I don't I don't remember doing a, a study on it, like an exhaustive right. study on it. So it's been missing for a long time. So we as parents need to learn right along with our kids. Uh, so as as you're reaching out, you know, and chatting with, I'm I'm looking at at some of the topics you're going to be doing hope is alive teaching civics in a fun and purposeful way <laughs> it is possible be of good cheer so it's not like you said it's not doomsday stuff but it's, you right. know raising leaders um and just equipping parents out there to be like i know you might be listening and going constitution oh my <laughs> word like this is terrifying like i don't know the first thing how am i going to teach your kids and it's one of those things parents we're we're learning right alongside that's with right. our kids you know like i hated history in high school, but as I was teaching my children, I really learned a lot. Uh, so parents be encouraged. I mean, yeah. Rick, Rick's going to be there. Rick, he has eight talks. And unfortunately I'm speaking during two of them. <laughs> 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 so I well, won't be able to come listen to all of them. You know, uh, Ginger, you raised something that's really, really important. Cause I think a lot of times parents shy away from these topics out of a fear of not having the answer to every question. And, and you know, we do something called constitution coaching where we have coaches that yeah. sign up and host our classes. And I always tell these coaches, there's 24,000 of them across the country. I always tell them, you don't have to know anything. You don't have to know the answer. Well, that's why we bring in David Barton and, and mm-hmm. Kirk Cameron teaching on the monument and Congressman Barry Loudermilk and all these people. We bring the experts to you so that you don't have to have all those answers. You learn with your kids exactly what you just said. I love that yeah. model. 
And that's that's why I mean, it's really three generations of ignorance in terms of our education yes. system. And ignorance is not I don't mean that as an insult. I'm ignorant about a lot of things, but ignorance is curable. We can learn mm -hmm. to then fill that fill that gap. So I'm so glad you said that because I want parents to know this is going to be number one. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hopeful. We're not doomsdayers. We very much believe and, and the world doesn't understand this, but we know we can have joy even in the midst of the storm. In fact, we're commanded to do so yes, in James, right? Absolutely. Count it all joy mm -hmm. when you experience various trials. So we can actually be righteously angry at the things that are happening in our country and be joyful at the same time. Now, a non-believer is going, how do you do How do you do both of those? <laughs> only, only God can give us that. But that's the way that, I mean, we're supposed to have joy yes. as we engage in the battle and, and in the fight. So don't be intimidated, folks. We're going to have fun with it. And it's a topic that you're actually going to enjoy and your kids are going to enjoy it. And part of the reason they enjoy it is because we do it through the eyes of the people that experienced it. So take your 14, 15 year old daughter and learn the story of Sybil Ludington, Dicey mm -hmm. Langston, these girls mm -hmm. that at 15 and 16 years old in the Revolutionary War did Herculean things. I mean, they did yes. incredible things. Tell the stories to, you know, I, it, it, I, it, I honestly, it bothers me that that we teach young people that America's racist and all this horrible stuff. We invented slavery when, in fact, every nation on the planet had slavery when America mm -hmm. was birthed. We were the first mm -hmm. one to ban the slave trade. We were the fourth one mm -hmm. to ban slavery completely. And all the great black heroes in our history that haven't been taught. So if you're a seven-year-old mm -hmm. little black boy in America and you're taught America's racist, you're going to grow up to hate America. But if you're a seven-year-old little black boy in America and you learn about James Armistead, the first yes. double spy in American history, mm -hmm. or you learn about Crispus Attucks, who was the the really the first patriot killed, uh, and 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 the American Revolution began as a result of you learn about all these great black patriots in the American Revolution, you have a totally different perspective. Mm -hmm. and you say, "Wow, I have ownership in the American dream." It just changes everything Absolutely. whenever you look at it through the eyes of the people that lived it. It makes it fun and entertaining, but mm -hmm. it also makes you realize there's somebody in American history that I can relate to that I can learn from. Uh, mm -hmm. I just think that's so, so important. And we're going to, we're going to do all that in our, in our workshops and in the, in the keynotes and talk about that. I want people to leave the conference, honestly, with a little bit of a burden. I want them to leave going, this is up mm -hmm. to me. I've got to mm -hmm. do something to help save Absolutely. Liberty in my community, but also I want them to leave with hope and, and, and a joy that they get to do what they're doing, that they get to spend this extra time yes. with their kids, that they get to pass this torch to their kids. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be a great couple of days. I just, I just want, I want, I want people to be excited about it. And like you said, not be intimidated about it or think that it's a topic they wouldn't normally want to cover. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you will never regret going to one of Rick's talks. I'm telling you, you will love every moment. So get on there, look at the schedule, put little X's beside his names. Cause you're going to want to be at each of those parents out there. You're going to want to be at those talks and you are, he's going to just connect you give you resources. And you know what, Rick, if people want to, you're going to have a booth. I mean, people can reach out to you, right? They can talk sure. to you while you're there. And yeah. um, guys out there, if you want to know a little bit more about Rick and what he's doing before convention, where can they find you, Rick? Where's a good place for people to look you up? PatriotAcademy.com. Go to PatriotAcademy. Everything we do is there from our constitution coaching to our leadership congresses across the country would love for you to send your young people um especially your high schoolers 16 17 18 but also young people in college 16 to 25 i forget the dates of our of our uh, northeast uh, leadership congress but but it's all on our website i think it's in july it is in july um, yeah it is july yeah dates, but yeah <laughs> So there's something for everybody there at the website. Uh, you know, uh, there, we have adult programs again, uh, of course, as well. We even have handgun defense classes with constitution training that make it fun to learn how to defend your families. We have a lot of different things. They're all yeah. available at patriotacademy.com. That is fabulous. So thank you so much again for coming on today. I'm so glad that our audience gets to know a little bit about you before you come out to convention. And I'm excited to meet you in person. I'm really glad that you came and chatted with us today. You've been a hero of mine for a long time. So oh, thank you. Thanks for coming on. And of course. we look forward to seeing you in less than two months. We'll see you then. Looking forward to it. Thanks for the invite. Right. Thank you. All right. See you later, everybody.